What kind of like specific suppression have you seen with whether it be your new study with the Oreos or other things that you're interested in? Yeah. So um, I won't speculate as to like algo, blah, 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 internet suppression, but specific things would be like, you know, a, a prominent lipidologist, including Thomas Spring, saying falsehoods like this isn't a real phenotype. It hasn't been published upon. I'm like, dude, we have like eight, eight nine papers. We have more coming out. It's also been published upon by others. There are definitely papers out there. So stop talking this nonsense about there not being. I think the most egregious example, though, that I can think of was um, if you can find there is an abstract um, circulation, um, type in statin ketogenic diet CAD um, rapid progression or something like that. So circulations are pretty prominent in cardiovascular journal. And there was an abstract published that was presented at an AHA meeting, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. And the title, let's see if we can find the title so we can read it so I'm not misrepresenting it at all. Rapid progression of CAD after stopping statin, starting a ketogenic diet in a phenotypic lean mass hyperresponder. Okay. So this is a scenario where they're using our coin terminology. They're calling out a lean mass hyperresponder. Okay. And rapid progression of coronary artery disease. So this, like, this guy has coronary artery disease after stopping, stopping a statin. statin. And starting a ketogenic diet. So the the title is clearly claiming he went keto and had progression of heart disease. Right. It says that directly and he's a lean mass hyperresponder. Now, I wanted to bring this up because what you see here is the entirety of it. There is no more. It is not a full paper. It is an abstract. But it got published in this. this oh, um, wow. It's very short. Yeah, that's it. That's it. What's the conclusion? So, so the, I mean, the title is kind of the punchline. Okay, so people got are it. reading, right? Right. But what I expected when I saw the headline was this is a um, somebody presenting a case in which there actually was a lean mass hyperresponder who had rapid progression of disease on a ketogenic diet, which, I mean, we have thousands of them. Of course, there's going to be one person. You'd think there would be one person, especially with cholesterol levels this high. So I think, okay, they, they found a case and they're presenting it as a cautionary tale, which I'm all in favor of. If the text supported that title, I would be promoting it a lot because I think it's an important story to – to hear in contrast of other stories we hear with people with high cholesterol who don't have progression. But then I read it and my jaw dropped because it was so egregiously mismatched with the title. The scenario was this. There was a man, um, presumably on a mixed diet because he wasn't keto, who at some time, probably in his 40s, they don't give a very good timeline, but had um, um, occlusion of his left anterior descending, which is Mm -hmm. the main left artery of his heart. So they went in there and did what's called a PCI. So they basically stented open um, his artery because it was clogged, Mm -hmm. his left artery. While they were in there fixing his left artery, which was clogged via his mixed diet, or while he was on his mixed diet, I'm not blaming the mixed diet, they noticed that there was some moderate disease. There was already disease in his right. So his left is clogged up, they're pumping it open or stenting it open. Then they look in his right artery and there's moderate disease. So they give him a statin secondary prevention totally like i'm not clearly i'm not like criticizing the clinical care of this patient at all but this is what happened left artery you know occluded stented open look has right artery disease they put him on a statin he's then on this statin for multiple years two years to be exact um during which time they're not like analyzing the progression of his right artery at all it's a couple years go by there can be progression on this medication Mm -hmm. then they go to and then he tried a ketogenic diet and had an RCA STEMI, um, ST elevation myocardial infarction, heart attack. So the timeline is such that they say, okay, he has left artery disease. We have to actually go in there and stent it open, presumably stent it, it's a PCI. Um, and then they see there's right artery disease. Then a bunch of time elapsed where they're not following him for plaque progression. They're not looking at plaque progression during which he's on a statin. Then he tries a ketogenic diet, which they don't define. They don't give a duration. And he's not even a lean mass hyperresponder. And yet they can come off with that title? What? Like, what not? Like, it who is that? Who who published that? It was the journal with circulation. And here's the thing. I actually tried. I had multiple um, people I was in contact with, including cardiologists. It was like, well, let's, let's put a letter to the editor in. You can't do a letter to the editor because it's an abstract. You couldn't even do an e-note or an e-letter because it's an abstract. And the author's contact information is not provided. So... Let's not call them out by name. I mean, people can look and see what their name is. We have it up on the screen. But point being, like, I 
I was very vocal about when this came out. Nobody replied to the criticisms. I tried to do letter to the editor again. There wasn't the option for that. And it just just stood. And this is one of those things where it's like, it's not, it's not a gray zone. It's not like, okay, we have interpretive differences, Nick. This is clearly a propaganda piece. Mm. Taking yeah, but shots. Who, the, who sees this though? Like, oh, we literally had to like find the direct, the no, exact is, headline to find cir- it. Circulation is a major cardiovascular show. It is. Yes. Okay. Uh, there's more behind the scenes that I can't reveal. Uh-huh. But let's just say the fact that the so people that are that are and, in academia and, or in this medical field, yeah. they they see this stuff. Oh, I mean, people like Thomas Dayspring were like flaunting this on Twitter saying, get with the science, LDL deniers. And I'm like, dude, read the freaking thing. This is garbage. And again, I'm not someone who uses hyperbolic terminology, I think, uh-huh. most of the time. But this is garbage. This is like, it, it, it's not even that the bar was lowered. There was no bar. It's like you liked the title, so you ran with it. They mm. miscite the criteria for LMHR, and even with misciting it, he doesn't meet the criteria. Right. And again, it's like, so this guy, let's just say he was eating a standard American diet. They don't define his diet, but like, he's eating a standard American diet for most of his life, has left artery disease, multiple years elapsed, and then what? He tries some bacon for a week? Th- that, that legitimately could be the case. Right. And then you say it's a ketogenic diet's fault, because they don't define, they don't give a duration. It could have, yeah, it's, like, it's, I mean. What's this guy's name again on Twitter? The guy who, who posted this, he was flaunting it? Oh, Dayspring? Dayspring. What what is the incentive for people like this? Is this just is this just uh, well, a theory or something that he's been talking about for so long he just doesn't want to be wrong after all these years cuz clearly he's an older guy. Yeah. I mean, I I Or do you think so, there's some sort of other I think it's ego defense and and and, and arrogance thing. No, no, no. I I think it's I think he's generally thinking he's doing the right thing. I think he's arrogant and doesn't want to look at new data. And thinks that people like me are just beneath him. And thankfully, there are other people who are a little bit more open-minded, including the guy who trained him, who, here's an Easter egg, is the senior author on Oreo versus Staten. What was his name again? William Cromwell. William Cromwell. Who, yeah, trained Dayspring and, you know. Wow. He's, so anyway, um, if, if people weren't aware of that, there's a little fun Easter egg for you. That we uh, snuck in there. William Cromwell has been amazing. One of those people that, like, I've worked with a lot of people. And there are some professors, a lot of them or some, who, like, re- will rest on their laurels. Others who remain engaged throughout their career with the academia, and that's re- respectable. And then there's a small group who are very engaged with the um, academics, but who are also willing to see the new generation, not as just the student, but they're willing to sit down with you with humility and listen to your new ideas as equals. And I can't tell you how good that feels and how much respect that makes me have for those people. Mm. Um, so he's been absolutely phenomenal. Um, in fact, I think, you know, it takes a little bit of time for people to adopt new ideas. And sometimes it takes someone on the inside with credibility. cromwell has been doing lipidology longer than I've been alive. Like he's been around the block. And for him to come out and and um, promote these ideas with us, like he was with us on Cam Berry and has been on with us on, on various channels since Oreo versus Staten came out and can speak about it very well. I mean, that has a lot of utility for us. Actually, I call him, <laughs> I'm trying to nickname him, brand him Lem Jesus for Lipid Energy Model Jesus. Also, because his name is Bill Cromwell. So BC, NBC. <laughs> it's a perfect pun. I'm hoping it catches on. Um, but he's been fantastic. And, you know, I do have, you know, I, 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 it's not my brand to take shots at someone when they're not in the room, like now with Dayspring. But the thing is, I, his way and his, his bullying, including, I mean, look, you can look at my Twitter because I've tweeted about it when he just, you know, calls some of my friends nasty names without engaging. And then, you know, he says things that don't necessarily have an evidence base. And you ask questions and you try to engage. He's never replied to me once, ever, about anything. Yeah. Which is just like, dude, if you're actually an academic who's engaged intellectually on this, and I ask a direct question multiple times, like, if at that point you're not engaging, then I do feel I have a little bit of license to call you on your BS. Mm -hmm. Um, Until that point in which you step up and have a conversation. I have even invited him, including others, to live casts 
in front of, you know, on audiences with like millions of subs. I'm like, if you think I'm out of line, call me out, call, catch me out live. Like this is your opportunity. You want to have a conversation, then let's have a conversation. And, you know, you can denigrate my friends for not being properly credentialed and being quote, internet babblers, some of the terms he's used, um, because they haven't, you know, you know, had a PhD or X, Y, or Z or publications. You can try to play that game with me, but I don't think it'll go very well. So I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, with 50 years experience, but I think I'm credentialed enough and smart enough to be worth having a conversation with. And if you don't want to have that conversation, well, I just, don't think it's going to age well for these people. Yeah, I mean, he's not the only guy this that does this kind of shit online, right? There's also that guy Peter Hotez, the vaccine scientist who like attacks Joe Rogan for some of the things he says about vaccines and all those questions. I, on I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go down the vaccine rabbit hole with you. I'm sorry, I'm just not. I'm, I don't want to go down. I don't care about the vaccine rabbit the hole. I, I just wanted to point point out that there's people like that. Yes, that there exist. Are like that yeah. that uh, that are surrounded by people who have the same beliefs they do and i'm not even like when not even talking about financial incentives they're just timid people who want to be supported by their quote unquote tribe yeah and that could be the case with this guy yeah i think so i think he gets a lot of positive feedback from his community um, some of the th that's the annoying thing. That's why I want to call it out. It's sometimes like when he said this thing about ketosis down regulating LDL receptors, everybody, including physicians, was like, Oh, I didn't know that because it's not true. Like, there wasn't like a critical thinking. It was like, if you have enough, um, you know, gravity in the space, then what you say then actually gets baked into the common knowledge base mm -hmm. and isn't challenged. It's the eminence based medicine versus evidence based medicine, which I hate. So at the point where somebody feels the license to make stuff up, and isn't held to account, that I think is very dangerous. Um, and that's what gets me a little bit irked in addition to the the bullying. So, mm. you know, I'm, I'm getting a little bit pokey here evidently. And part of the purpose of that is I want to provoke a response. You know, maybe somebody will hear it. Maybe, you know, Tom will hear it, Tom Dayspring, and um, then react and have a conversation with me because I'm happy to have that conversation. I'm happy to leave grudges at the door and learn from him because I'm sure he has something to teach me. And I'd like to enter that conversation were it ever to happen with mutually open minds, me being willing to learn from him. But also, you know, I think we have some interesting data that he definitely has not looked at. Mm -hmm. So let's have those discussions and, you know, act as a team to push the science forward rather than, you know, the alternative. Yeah. Yeah.